the big story of the month, Frankie Kazarian is gone. He's jumped to the Fed. He showed up on one of the tapings and he's like, you made me job to a NASCAR driver. He was out of contract, so he didn't quite quit or walk out. Well, he did. He's like, I'm leaving. But he's also out of contract, so he could leave. But he's like, I the, the whole Jeff Hammond thing, losing to Jeff Hammond on pay-per-view, being pinned by Jeff Hammond on pay-per-view. Thumbs down. I'm going to WWE. The fact that that's the reason is pretty funny. It's well, it is more of a, like a straw breaking the camel's back moment, where I I don't think they were particularly happy, as I think we've commented a few times in the previous episodes. They've been downcycled pretty dramatically, so mm. I think he was already pretty unhappy, and like there is tentative plans at this stage to turn Shane and Kazarian face an AMW heel, AMW to work a program with the Rhodes against Dusty and Dustin, which probably would have rocked if it ever happened. <laughs> Yeah. So I think that their plan was to flip those and probably go with babyface Shane and Kazarian perhaps as champions down the line. And he just didn't care about any of that. And he was like, peace out, suckers. I'm I'm gone. Yeah, well, you know what? If you're not under contract and you feel that strongly about it, feel free. Yeah. So Frankie, the future Kazarian, who had been working without a contract for TNA, quit last week and said goodbye via a website address. Sources say he was upset with being disrespected by Dusty Rhodes when he protested how he was used with Jeff Hammond at the last pay-per-view. When he wrote about his decision on his website, he did not make any negative comments about Dusty or anyone. He wrote, quote from Frankie, I am in fact no longer with TNA Wrestling. I had been wrestling... Great impression. <laughs> I had been wrestling without a contract since last year, and I made the decision to end my partnership with the company and pursue other opportunities in the world of professional wrestling. I cannot stress enough that this was my decision and no one's fault. Sometimes we reach points in our personal and professional lives that we must make decisions that hurt a great deal, and this has been one of them. I want to thank everybody involved in TNA. From day one, I was always treated with respect and class. I had the most fun in my career these past two years with TNA. I also want to thank Dixie Carter, a truly classy woman and someone I consider a good friend and an even better person. Jeff and Jerry Jarrett gave me a platform to do what I love on a national level, and for that, I will for be forever grateful. I thank them for having the confidence in me to represent their company as a champion on two different occasions. Everyone in the office, Bob Ryder, Tim Welsh, Bill Banks, Scott Hudson, Jerry Borsch, the amazing announced duo of Mike Tanay and Don West, I consider terrific people and very good friends. The friendships I have forged in TNA mean more to me than anything. It is with a heavy heart that I say goodbye. I was going to say, you just read his Impact promo. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was going to say, like, literally, <laughs> he is very gracious and decent on his way out, and he did the exact same thing, leaving AEW to go back to Impact. It's like, great stuff, friends, pals, appreciate the opportunity, but I've got to bet on myself. And it's funny to see him do the exact same thing here, leaving Impact for the first time, heading to WWE. A true pro's pro. Yeah, he understands, like, obviously, he just returned for what is his third run in Impact. Which I'm actually, like, pretty excited about. He's had a kind of a killer run this last year and a half. Like, whenever he gets the opportunity to have, like, a match longer than three minutes, mm. he kind of knocks it out of the park. So I'm pretty, like, excited for what he's going to end up doing in Impact. I think he has had arguably, like, the, the best singles matches of his career in the last 12 months. The ones against Saban, the ones against Mike Bailey, against Josh Alexander. Tremendous stuff. Also, one that a lot of people may not have seen, but you should go search out, him and Takeshita from Dark. Mm. They killed it together. So yeah, it's, it's fun to, to watch him be like, yeah, the, the exact same tone of, of the message. Of, as I said, he's, he's smart. He doesn't burn his bridge. He, he knows that there is some day where he will have to come back to TNA, and he does twice, as mentioned. And there may be some day where he has to go back to AEW, and he has left that bridge open to him because he's a pro, and he gets pro wrestling. He's the opposite of low-key, really. Mm. Which is ironic, because the professional. <laughs> Uh, Kazarian teamed with Shannon Moore in a dark match win over Big Vito and Nunzio at SmackDown, so he was then signed to a developmental deal. We'll talk about Frankie Moore in a year and a half, I guess. We will see you soon, the coolest. The end of the coolest run. I guess he wasn't the coolest for a while still, but still, the end of the coolest Frankie Kazarian. They were calling him the coolest. It's a fun note, when he had the little like meltdown backstage about losing to Jeff Hammond on the day of Against All Odds, Douglas was officially like announced to wrestlers that day as the new liaison with The Office, so he's like not quite head of talent relations, but if you have an issue, go to franchise, and then he will... Don't bother us. <laughs> it's pretty much that. It's like like have the buffer between the talent and like Dusty and Jarrett and Dixie, so that they go to Douglas and then Douglas goes to them. On the very first day, the, like the, there was that blow up and people thought that Douglas kind of 
g them up a little as opposed to calm them down, which is probably the role he should have played. And instead, he kind of riled them up, and people weren't happy about franchising his first night kind of heading talent relations. Mm. Like, uh, you kind of need someone in that role. You, you can. Like, when you're Booker and you're owner and you're dealing all with all that, you really can't deal with every talent problem yourself, nor should you really. Yeah. The problem is you need to actually have someone... I'm not saying that Shane Douglas wasn't this guy. I, I don't know. I didn't deal with him. But you, you need to have someone who is actually actively making strides in those departments. So you can't just have someone who listens to the problems and then doesn't do anything about it. Yeah, or you, you need someone to, to do the Vince thing where it feels like he's listened to you and, and, and shown your concerns. And then when he fires you, you leave the company and say, he loved me. You need to have a John Laurinaitis type who was the bad guy to take all the shit and then people go, no, but Vince always, he believed in me. Mm. So franchise is in that role, clearly. 